Good morning. We've got the majority of the carving done with the Dremel and now I'm going to switch over to a master carver and really do the fine, fine things that I need to do with highlight, good concentration, and a lot of wrist and finger control. So here we go. All right, it's the next day and Spook and I are here ready to get started. I did not get to do the rest of the chiseling out in here or in here, but I'm going to. And I got, I worked until it was pretty dark out, and that's how far I got. I got to where I have most of it, but I still have to do little bits in here, and then of course the whole front part. But I've got two others that I'm so excited to start working on that I want to go ahead and do the dyeing on this one. This one is so big and it is so heavy. I'm thinking this might make a really good lamp. It's a little bit tippy, but I can I can solve that. I think that would just be a gorgeous, gorgeous lamp. And this one, I'm not sure. Once all the colors are in, then I'll decide if I want to come down any further here and then what type of a top I want to put on it. But that I kind of don't want to decide until I get everything done. I am going to have to take the tape off of that at some point. And then the other one, the other one is a single bar with a little chick. And I want to go ahead and do the dyeing on this as well so that I can do all the grinding when it's good weather outside all at the same time. So I think you're still working on your first one, right? And working your way around the back side. So while you're working your way around the back side of yours, I'm going to dye the others. Okay, this is going to be noisy, but I want to show you the difference between using a Dremel and using something a little bit different. I'll show you what I'm using today. Night. I want to do just the very, very fine detail in here. And so I am still using, well, the lighting's terrible. I've got spotlighting on what I'm doing so I can see it. I'm still using the saber tooth burr, but I have swapped over from using the Dremel. And now I am using a master carver. This is basically like a dental drill and it's so fast that you, you make sure it's, sometimes you can't t even tell it's running because it's pretty quiet. Like that you can kind of tell the light came on. So I've got my speed set up here and what you're going to find a little bit of difference with your tools is some have more torque, some have more speed. This has a lot of speed and also it does not have much at all vibration just like a dental tool where you wouldn't want a dentist jumping around on your teeth. Same type of thing. So this is a little bit heavier in some ways than the extension and that's why I like the extension from the Dremel. It's pretty light, but also you have to be so careful about keeping the line pretty straight. And although it's light, you have to really grip it because it jumps around a lot because of the vibration. With this, you're going to see that there's not a lot of vibration. It's not jumping around a lot. You can have pinpoint accuracy with this bit. So I'm going to hang on, turn it on. Here we go. Now, don't forget to wear your mask whenever you're doing any grinding like that. And wear your headphones. I'm taking this off now so I can show you what we've got. What you could see was that the Master Carver allowed me to get really detailed, tiny, tiny little spots in there. And I could actually work to my left and to my right, not just to the right of each thing. Like you saw, first I went around to the right, to the right, to the right, to the right. And then I flipped the piece over. And then the right, the right, the right. But then for these little tiny things in between, it was really nice to switch over to the Master Carver and use that. Just remember your mask, remember your, remember your hearing protection. That has so little vibration that allows you to really get in the detailed areas. And I see right here, it looks like I might have nicked. And so what will happen now is I'll go back with the wood burner and I will just touch up any places that I might have just nicked. That's to be expected that at some point you're, it's going to jump a little bit. You're going to get in there. This has a really interesting textured look and I don't know that it's picking it up there, but it's a very much an up and down texture. If it was a different style piece, I would probably go back and smooth all of that out. But in this case, I actually kind of want that texture. And I like to think of these ink dyes as looking sort of like Roseville pottery, kind of those muted tones. I really like the looks of that. I like how much the green 
pops and how much the brown pops on the tan. I know someone that I had in a class recently, she said that she always, always, always paints this part of the cord with like a buttermilk color because see how here it's got a really nice creamy color and then in this area it's kind of grayish and brownish and it can you know it can change color over time and I might actually try that this time it'll be a lot of extra work and I'm thinking what little tiny brush I'll need to get down in there but I might give it a try just for a more uniform look but I don't want it to look too fakey I want it to look very very natural okay I still have not I had this covered because I sprayed and I didn't want to spray these areas and keep them from accepting any dye so I just covered them with some painters tape. Next I can either paint these or dye them or I can grind out the outside and I think I'm going to go ahead and put all my color in and that way if I bleed over a little bit I'll just be taking it off of the skin instead of bleeding over onto the creamy color and then having to paint. So you might want to think about what order you want to do the next parts. I already put in the green and the brown here to coordinate with the colors back there. So at this point, you've got a pretty good looking piece. Someone today told me this reminded them of an Egyptian design. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I guess it is slightly Egyptian. I don't think, I don't know if there's are nail grains in Egypt, but I'm absolutely loving this project. I hope you're liking it too. And I hope you're liking that it's not one that takes a huge amount of time. It goes pretty quick. What I need you to start thinking about is what do you want to do with the top on yours? I have one that I think I'm going to turn into a lamp. This one, I'd have to really look at it and I might cut it a little bit further down and just have it as like a vase or it could accept it could accept a glass container and then you could put dried flowers in it, something like that, some dried naturals, or it could just be displayed like this. Maybe you could collect all your wine corks in there. Whatever it is you like to collect, you could collect in there. So that's that's your test now is to start thinking about how do you want to finish off the top? Do you want to do something with weaving? Do you want to do something with pine needles? What is it you'd like to do? And I know this project mainly was to show you how to plot out your circle, your cartouche, how to plot out what goes around the outside edge. And I can't remember if I said that I just used three fingers and I went all the way around and I marked it to make sure that I would have enough space. And let me see, I think I can still show you the marks. On this one, here's a mark right there and a mark right here and a mark right there. I actually, on this one, I tilted it at myself like this, and then I figured, okay, here's the top, and there would be one, and it divides into three and three. This one was a little bit smaller than the others, so that's why it had a different number of repeats all the way around, but you definitely, before you get started, you definitely want to plot out how much space do you have for each of your elements, how much space can they take up, because you don't want to get around to the edge and you've got you know like one here and a big gap there and you're trying to cram in a little bit over there and then you're trying to do something on the other side to make it match so plot that out beforehand of where you want everything to fall so got your homework start thinking about what you want for your top while you're thinking about what you want to do with the top, for the next episode, we're going to be considering whether or not we want to smooth out the carving in that cartouche. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you're finding this useful. Please subscribe so you get notifications for the next. I'll leave links to everything we've used so far below, and hope to see you in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Bye.